welcome to my channel if you are new and welcome back if you are not new thank you for being here my name is Reina I am a registered nurse and stay at home mom of two and this channel is all about what I eat and why I eat high fat meat heavy keto aka ketovore and as you can tell by the title of today's video it's going to be a little story of how I achieved my fat loss my weight loss and what I eat to maintain it. I'm going to just summarize a little bit of the story because really the unhealthy cycle of, of eating started when I was young. Right, so I was around 12 years old. I was always a chunky kid, always, always a chunky kid. I would get picked at, made fun of, called names, all the things. Um, and around 12 years old, I started to kind of internalize it, right? That's when you start caring about what other people think about you. That's when you start getting crushes. You start going through, through puberty. Um, yeah, you got you kind of start looking inward a little bit more, looking at yourself. How do I look compared to other people? Anyway, I got into a cycle of exercising a lot I, because that's what I thought like was healthy and that's the way that I would achieve weight loss. And lo and behold, I did. I would get home and exercise for hours, hours. By the end of the day, I was so, I remember I was so exhausted. Sometimes I was just too tired to shower. So I would just get home from school, exercise a lot, and then go to bed because um, I, I was exhausted. And I was, you know, like a preteen at that, no, I was a teenager. So was binging on crap food, like hot Cheetos and Twinkies there are these things called gancitos that my dad would keep in the freezer. And they're basically like Twinkies filled with jam and covered in chocolate, if you can ima imagine that. So I specifically remember those foods because that's like the crappiest of the crappiest food you could eat. That's what I would binge on. After my exercise, my bouts of exercise, that's what I would eat. And so I guess I was just burning through a bunch of nutrients, burning through a bunch of calories but I, I lost weight and maybe I was going to stretch out anyway. Maybe, I don't know. But anyway, at 12 years old, because of all the exercise, I had abs actually for a short time. I had abs, I would do a lot of ab workouts. So that'll tell you how much I, I you know, exercised, but it got me into this really unhealthy cycle of binging with crap food and then, uh, and then exercising it out, or so I thought, exercising all the crap food out. Um, and that kind of continued on to my early adulthood, uh, except I started cleaning up my diet and eating a lot less fat. I grew up eating very little meat, but I think I maybe even reduced that. I'm, tell I'm telling you guys, we would eat red meat maybe once a month, if that. So very little fat. I was honestly like borderline vegan. So that continued. I, it got to a point where I was very iron deficient. And I remember I was around 23 or 24 when we started trying to conceive. And I started thinking more about my diet. You know, you should always think about your diet. But that's when I started taking it more seriously. And I got labs done and I was super iron deficient. I was told that I you know, may have to get iron transfusions if I didn't take iron pills three times a day. I never took the iron pills. I think I took them for a few days and then I just couldn't because they made me nauseous. They made me constipated. Anyway, I got pregnant. I miscarried at eight weeks. Um, I could bet money that it was because I was super iron deficient. If you don't have oxygen in your blood, if you don't have enough iron in your blood, then you can't maintain a healthy pregnancy. And nothing changed in my diet, I mean, but we kept trying to get pregnant and I conceived um, a few months later. I had a honestly really great pregnancy and everything. Um, it was Everything was good. I continued to eat the same way, as low fat as possible, right? What I thought was healthy. Um, and thinking that I was making up for deficiencies just by taking a, a multivitamin, a prenatal vitamin. And anyway, so after my first pregnancy, I held on to about 10 extra pounds of fat that I just thought were there to stay. I didn't know what to do to get rid of them. I ate as little fat as possible. I was eating lots. At this point, 
I thought my diet was about as clean as it could be. I ate lots of oatmeal, organic sprouted oats, um, lots of organic veggies. At this point, I thought I was at my health peak with my diet. Um, but for some reason, I just could not get those 10 pounds off of me. Uh, so then I found a video here on YouTube about a doctor, Dr. Ken Berry, some of you may recognize him, who talked about the proper human diet and is like the complete opposite of what I thought it was. So meat, eggs, vegetables, if you want, but not necessary. Meat and eggs, basically some dairy if you want. Um, and I was like, that's insane. Um, I ignored his videos, right? But the algorithm kept pushing them out pushing them out. I watched one and I was hooked. So I tried it. I was like, what the heck, you know? And then after watching more and more and learning more and more, reading on my own, researching on my own, I realized, okay, this is the way I'm supposed to eat. I let go of the mentality that I had to get those 10, you know, extra pounds off of me and just ate because that's what I, you know, was meant to eat. That I was now convinced that that's what I was meant to eat as a human being. Well, nevertheless, several months later, took a long time because I was all only 10 to 15 pounds overweight. It wasn't like I ever had tons and tons of weight to lose uh, as an adult, but I lost them like that. I don't even, I, I think I have a really old vlog about when I lost them and I was shocked. I was scared, honestly, a little bit. I was in nursing school and I remember thinking, I wonder if this is stress. That's why I lost them so quickly. I lost them like that. It's like my body realized, okay, now we don't need to hold on to any extra fat. We don't need to hold on to anything. We know there's plenty of food. There's plenty of nutrients. You're good. So I lost the fat. And um, I found out several months after um, that I, I got rid of my iron deficiency anemia. So while I had more nutrients, I had less fat. And that kind of turned everything around for me. And that's why I made my channel into all about what I eat because I'm so passionate about it. Once you heal, it's hard not to become like almost religiously passionate about something when you heal something like that. And, th and my story isn't even, there's people who have healed so many other things. Anyway, beside the point. So then, you know, after learning about it and everything. My second pregnancy, I decided I was going to eat meat, eggs, veg. I was going to be totally on board with that and eat as close to to um, to this way of eating as I could. I did. Healthiest pregnancy. My first pregnancy was uh, full of nausea. I think I was vomiting and throwing up up until nine months pregnant. I had nausea and vomiting the whole time. No lie. The second time though, it was only two months and then I was done with the, with the vomiting. I still had some nausea, but nothing like the first time. So anyway, super healthy pregnancy and I lost the weight a few months later. I gained about the same amount, but for a different reason. And I'm convinced that it, it's for a different reason. I wasn't eating nutrients the first time. I was very, very nutrient deficient. The second time I gained about the same amount of weight. I, I didn't gain much weight at all. I think it was like 20 something pounds with both, um, but I lost them shortly after because I was no longer stuffing my face with carbs and vegetables, things that I thought were, were healthy. And in turn, I was eating lots of saturated fat, lots of cholesterol. Um, all of these things sound so bad, I know, but I needed to, to get that story out so you could understand the where I came from I came from pretty much the point where everyone else comes from right like everyone thinks that fat is bad for you and that's very much how I grew up thinking as well so you might you might be asking yourself well how do you eat so much fat like it doesn't make sense if you eat fat you gain fat on your body it makes sense and let me tell you that is the most unfortunate homonym because it's if you don't think about it too much it makes sense right that if you eat fat then you're going to gain fat. But let me explain as simply as I can why that is not true. It comes down to a hormone called insulin. 
And it all really just revolves around how each food affects insulin. Insulin is the hormone that is in charge of not only lowering your blood glucose, but also helping you store excess fat on your body. So the higher your blood insulin levels, the higher amount of fat you hold on to your body, in your body. And out of all the foods, they all fall under these three macronutrients, fat, protein, and carbohydrates. Fat doesn't elevate your blood glucose at all. Protein, maybe a little bit, a little, a little tiny insulin spike. Carbs, you get this huge peak. And that is because carbohydrates, whether they come from a donut or from broccoli, I know, I know, but carbohydrates turn into glucose. Not all carbohydrates are the same. I'm not equating. I'm not saying that if you're going to eat a, a, a donut, you might as well eat broccoli. No, sorry. <laughs> Backwards. I'm not saying that if you're going to eat broccoli, you might as well eat a donut. I'm not saying that at all. Um, but to different degrees, they all spike your blood glucose because carbohydrates turn into glucose in your body. Um, even though, like I said, not all carbohydrates are the same. I eat broccoli. I do eat some carbohydrates. I'm not saying all carbs are the same. They're not. Um, but anyways, so you can see that if you eat foods that elevate your blood insulin the highest, you're going to have the highest amount of, of, of weight gain, of fat gain. Now, furthermore, carbohydrates don't only just do that, they're also non-essential. There's nothing in your body that requires carbohydrates to function. Nothing, zero, zilch, not your brain, not, and if your brain needs a tiny amount of glucose, it does, but your liver makes it. Your liver makes it. We wouldn't have that function if we didn't need it, right? Like if God was just like, they can, you know, they need glucose to live, then they can eat it. No, he made it so that if you don't have that glucose to eat, your liver makes it. So it's non-essential. Carbohydrates um, don't take care of your, your muscles, don't take care of any of your tissues. They don't do anything for you, um, but fat and protein do. So anyway, if you've never heard about this way of eating, I encourage you to try it, right? So if you've, if you've ever tried any kind of diet and have been disappointed in your results, try this. <laughs> try this for three, four weeks, right? To you, maybe at the beginning, it will only be another diet that you're going to try. But more than that, it's a lifestyle for, for me, for many, many, many others who have also healed a lot of things within themselves, who have lost a lot of weight and have therefore healed um, obesity, diabetes, hypertension, um, arthritis, anxiety, uh, major depressive disorder, lots and lots of things. So anyways, I'm not trying to convince you. I just wanted to explain a little bit of where I came from, a little bit of what I know about the process, how, cause I had to learn it too. This, unfortunately, a lot of this wasn't something that I learned in nursing school. No one really explained to us how carbohydrates are non-essential. So, um, anyway, Thanks for listening to that little ramble. That was the sit down part of the video. I am now going to vlog about what I eat. I actually haven't eaten yet. It is 1247 and I'm fasting for, I've been fasting for a long time, kind of accidentally, but just cause I haven't been hungry. Yesterday, my last meal was, I don't know, sometime around this time. So this kind of a long fast, but then I had some pork rinds as a snack. So I've had a little bit of a snack since then, but still I, I'm hangry at this point. I'm kind of irritable. Um, but uh, before I go cook, I wanted to talk to the people who have been watching my videos for a while. If you watched my, I think it was my last vlog, I mentioned that I had been getting nauseous when I have electrolytes on an empty stomach. But the last, I've, I've been having them with sparkling water. So now I am experimenting a little bit and I'm on a super empty stomach having them just with still water. So I'm gonna finish these 
let them settle a little bit, see if I feel any nausea because I don't want to blame the electrolytes if really it's the sparkling water that gets my stomach going, you know, makes me nauseous. So I'm going to, um, to have these and then eat something. My first meal is probably going to be the same thing that I've been having for my first meal every single day for the past several weeks. When I get on a kick on something, I just cannot eat something else. I just crave it. So I'm really, really wanting that. Um, I'll show you guys what it is. For my second meal, I'm going to make keto lasagna. Or no, maybe I'll make um, a keto casserole that I haven't made in a really, really long time because it has... Um, cauliflower rice in it and I noticed the other day in the fridge that I've been having cauliflower rice in there for a long time that I haven't used so I'm going to use that probably today instead of the lasagna which by the way I have a ketovore lasagna the ketovore lasagna recipe that I use on this channel I'm gonna link it somewhere <laughs> it's really really good and that video it, it looks kind of dry because the cheese on the top burnt a little bit um but yours doesn't have to burn. It's it's really, really good, by the way. I'm gonna finish these electrolytes and then go make some food.